KURS Campus and Community Interest Radio Magazine. You can always be a part of Kutztown Live by giving us a call at 610-683-4859. And now, this is Kutztown Live. Hello, hello, this is Kutztown Live, Kutztown University's campus and community talk show. I am Juliana Jablonski, and unfortunately today, um, our other host here this afternoon, Laura, could not be with us, but instead we have a special guest host, um, Matt Devine. Hello, Matt Devine. Welcome to Kutztown Live. Thank you, thank you. You're stuck with me this week. (laughs) It's wonderful. It's a pleasure. Do you want to just tell us a little bit who you are and what your show is on KUR? We'll do a little intro of you first. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm Matt Devine. I'm 23, single, and I'm a student here at Kutztown University. <laughs> and um, I, have, I host the Midnight Movie Show here Wednesday nights at 10 o'clock. Oh. It's a lot of fun. Each week we showcase a different uh, B-movie, horror movie, and we talk about it with a guest, and it's great. And I have a nice, uh, fun little interview coming up with a local filmmaker next week, so be sure to tune in April 3rd for uh, that. It's going to be great. 10 right. o'clock. 10 o'clock on Wednesday nights, 10 right? 10 o'clock Wednesday nights. And we were just saying that you're going to be in a movie, oh. which is, the, we were just talking, and I just think that's the coolest thing, so I just think we should share, are we allowed to say that? Am I allowed to talk about this? Um, or no, is this not allowed? Uh, I, I, I can talk a little bit about it, but I can't, like, go into any detail, but yes, I, um... You can just say what you're in, and then we'll end it there. Okay, <laughs> uh, I, I, I worked on the Joker film for uh, Warner Brothers, which should be coming out sometime in October, and after that, I can go into more detail about my experiences. I think that is so so cool. Anyways, here with us in the studio this afternoon, we've got three guests from KU Presents. Hello, and do you want to each introduce yourselves over there? Hi, Juliana. It's me, Brian. Great to be back with you. And Matt, you're doing a great job so far co-hosting. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if Am I supposed to introduce myself the way Matt did? I'm slightly over 29 <laughs> and married. And <laughs> just kidding. Um, no, I've talked with you many times. So I'm Brian Zelmer, the director of KU Presents. And I've brought with me uh, two other people from KU Presents that the three of us make up three quarters of the department of KU Presents. And um, because we wanted to talk about uh, our history today, it's our 30th anniversary uh, season. And uh, these two ladies, which we'll be introduced in just a moment, have been here for quite a long time, and they know the rich history of, of our wonderful series here on campus. And so I thought it would be better that they talk about it more than me. Who, I'm only here a year or so. Uh, so I don't, I, we have Elaine Bonfito, our education coordinator. Say hi, Elaine. <laughs> hi, Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Hi, Brian. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks. And we ha- have Amy Botwright, who she has one title that doesn't really fit her because she's like the queen of the universe of KU Presents. She covers a lot more than just what her title would be. So I like queen of the universe. Hopefully that's okay with you. I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) And you're here to tell us a little bit about your history. You said it's the 30 year anniversary? Wow. Yes, 1988. It all started with Ellen Finks was the director then and they'd had a a three show season. And shortly after that, they had um, a need for a technical director and that's when our uh, technical guy, Greg Kokolis, came aboard uh, a year or two into it. Um, but then shortly after that, uh, Amy and Elaine joined. So why don't, why don't you ladies tell them a little bit about the history of the series? Um, I started, this is Amy, I started in 2000, in the fall of 2000, uh, the day after the first show of the season. So I didn't get to see this whole season opening, uh, but I did get to see the great performances for the whole rest of the season and what I can remember most about that year is that we did this great group called Beau Soleil out of um, the Cajun Creole genre and the show was completely sold out people were dancing in the aisles and I was so excited to be part of KU Presents. (laughs) I started just a couple of years after that in 2003 um, as the community outreach coordinator Um, up to that point, uh, I guess there was there was a couple years when there was another person that, that had that position, but before that, Ellen was doing the whole thing. She was the director, and she was doing outreach and box office for a long time, too. So, Jeez. Yeah, it, it's Many really cool. <laughs> One thing that we did this year uh, to commemorate our 30th anniversary is we put together uh, a short documentary series, five-part series, um, and we interviewed everyone 
from our his history, from all of the directors that ever ran the program to some of our longtime subscribers that have been with us for almost the full 30 years, um, to people who were here, uh, administrators at the time when the, the program was getting started. And, and really, I should mention that it, it was all really, uh, which president was it again, Elaine? That um, I'm trying uh, to, my memories. Dr. McFarland. McFarland, Dr. McFarland, which one of our, the building I think we're in is named after, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And, I think uh, it was actually Dr. Stratton. Oh, that started okay. it. It started. Yeah. It started with Dr. Stratton, gotcha. and and uh, I think he, actually, he passed away a, maybe a year or so into the program, and Dr. McFarland. That's right. Picked and it up it was, from there. It was Dr. Stratton's dream um, to actually create this professional series where artists came from all over the world, and not only to give opportunities for the students on campus, but to help bring community onto campus and make connections. Uh, you know, to sort of help build the, the community connections, if you will, between the campus and the surrounding community. Um, and, and it was very successful. And even to this day, our current president will hold uh, certain special events at his residence before our shows and invite people to come see our shows with him. And it's a, it's a good way to connect with businesses to show, you know, and, and important leaders around the community so they could actually get involved and see what's going on in campus and interact with a lot of the students that participate as well. So that was kind of the impetus of it all. And it, it's grown over the years to this really wonderful series. And we've also included um, programs for children. And, and we had a really successful long run serving uh, families and children, uh, doing all kinds of young, young artist shows. And then unfortunately, when the, the bubble kind of burst, um, the financial bubble, we had to make some changes. That kind of went away for a while. But excitingly, we had this new KU Art Society who's helping us bring this back. And so Elaine this year has been really uh, helping us make these connections again with the K through 12 schools. And we just had a great event last week with one of our artists. Yeah, we had um, Benesse here last week, last Thursday. And the um, Ronnie Benesse is the the star of the show, so to speak. He's he's a Spanish guitar player and had flamenco dancers and salsa. And we had um, several schools, several high schools, and also um, the entire Kutztown Middle School came up to see the show. And we're very, very excited. So this, this documentary series can be seen on our YouTube channel. KU Presents has a, a YouTube channel. You can just go into YouTube and type KU Presents and you'll, you'll find it. And uh, the entire series of, of five parts is there. Uh, it's really interesting. I learned a lot from doing all these interviews. But there's a lot of things that happen, a lot of stories that are on the cutting room floor. We had hours and hours of footage. Um, and some of the funny stories that I heard, um, I, I don't know which ones to tell, but we had some, some really strange things happen over the years. Um, you know, just a lot of fun things that, that, uh, that occurred in the building. <laughs> I don't know what some of your favorite memories are over the years or something that somebody talked about. I mean when Beausoleil had me drive them to the liquor store? <laughs> <laughs> are we allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so is there any um, upcoming events that we should know about? Yes, yes we give have. Us some, give us some details on that. I'm very excited to hear what we have coming up. Yes, we have Arturo Sandoval, the 10-time Grammy Award winner, uh, Latin jazz. Actually, he does all sorts of jazz and all other types of music as well, but Latin jazz is what he's really known for. Um, and he's coming on April 16th. And we're kind of tagging on the end of a Burke's Jazz Fest, and, and they're including us in their lineup as a, a post-festival event. Um, it's going to be a really great event. We expect to be sold out, but we currently do have some tickets left. So if people are thinking about it, they should really act quickly because those will sell out. And where, how much are tickets, and where can we go to get tickets for that? Well, they can go to our website, or they can call our box office. Our, um, I was going to say, KU, KU students get $10 tickets if they go to the MSU information desk with their ID. Yeah, $10 for all of our shows. It's not just Arturo Sandoval. So that's an amazing deal well, that a lot of students don't know about. I remember this, I think it was just this past winter, um, Jane Lynch and then yes, Meredith yes. from The Office. I can't yeah. think of her real name. I just remember a bunch Kate of people Flannery. posting Kate pictures <laughs> with her here. And I was like, that's the coolest thing. They were so, fun. They were a lot of fun. I know a bunch of students went to... Um, that one. And then so is there anything else coming up this year or should we be looking forward to next fall? Well, on April 16th, we're going to be announcing to our, we have a, a pre-show event with our subscribers uh, to announce our next season. And then right after that, we'll let the world know. Um, we've already got our season lined up and I'm very excited about it, but I can't tell you yet. Uh, no spoilers for our listeners? <laughs> no, sorry. Oh. It'll be great. 
It'll be great. And you know, we're all excited to hear, and I'm sure everybody's going to be looking up for updates on that. Um, now, do you guys happen to have any, what, what, what would you say are some of your favorite events that have been held here that you guys have been involved with? That's a hard question yes, because we so have many. so many different ones. I, I will say meeting Audra McDonald, who was my idol, the six-time Tony Award winner, is probably the best performance and experience ever. <laughs> I love it. Yes, and she has the uh, memorabilia to, comm to commemorate it all. I have her glass with lipstick on it so I can clone her. <laughs> Do you still have that glass? It's in my office. It's framed in a, in a box. And it's not creepy at all. <laughs> That's wonderful. No, I've, I've definitely heard worse. <laughs> oh, no, now, I'm, now I'm concerned. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, well, worse than that? D just I mean, that. it's not bad, but... <laughs> no, um, uh, an, an, old, an old friend of mine uh, that I worked at, at a film festival with, she, um, she met Jimi Hendrix after Woodstock and oh st uh, stole his cigarette butt out of the ashtray at the bar they were at and she wow. still has it to this day <laughs> and I like that's just hilarious to me I mean I, I don't even want to save anyone's cigarette butt let alone, <laughs> <laughs> let alone the celebrities yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious yeah all right and is there anywhere we can go um, to get updated on the schedule and uh, with all the events coming up oh, yeah, kupresents.org all right, is there anything else you would like to and say to the listeners this afternoon while you're here in the uh, KUR studios? Oh, thanks for having us here. We're, we're excited. Go check out our documentary series on YouTube and, and follow us on Facebook, too. <laughs> All right, we will. We sure, we'll try to we'll share that, that, that YouTube video up now, you said? Yeah, all yeah. all five of them. It's actually right. five episodes, five half hour episodes. So oh wow! All right, we have a Cut Sound Live Facebook, so we'll try and share that on there. Awesome! Too. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in this afternoon. It was wonderful to have you, and we'll be back with uh, the Student Government Board uh, only here on KUR. The Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce is your premier resource and voice for trusted local business. The Chamber advances regional economic and cultural growth through supportive collaboration with business and community organizations, as well as government. For more information, call the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce at 610-683-8860. That's 610-683-8860, or visit their website at northeastberkschamber.com. Since the early 70s, Friends Incorporated, located at 658 D. Noble Street in Kutztown, has helped thousands of families in northeastern Berks County strengthen relationships with themselves and their community through a wide range of outreach services. Every family and individual is offered case management services, food pantry assistance, counseling, support groups, and program referrals. Contact Friends Incorporated at 610-683-7790. That's 610-683-7790. Or visit their website, www.friendinc.org. Friend Incorporated, helping our neighbors to strengthen our community. Ray's Pizza De Sonio is the newest buzz on Main Street. Located at 478 West Main, Ray's has specialty Italian pinwheels, handmade mozzarella, and hot slices at the ready. To order your favorite, dial 484-648-2720. That's 484-648-2720. Or order online at raisepizzadesogno.com. That's raisepizzadesogno.com. Mention KU Radio for a special treat. Integrity Services and Solutions is a local independent insurance agency specializing in employee benefits, Medicare plans, and human resource services. True personal service with a commitment to excellence. Integrity Services and Solutions, 610-939-9593. That's 610-939-9593 or on the web at www.integrityservicesandsolutions.com. Integrity Services and Solutions is a member of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce, a 501c6 which helps members grow business relationships, raise business profiles, attract new customers, and partner with area nonprofits and schools to promote collaboration and goodwill.
Power Marketing International provides leading-edge web design and marketing services to help businesses get found online, impress and engage viewers, and convert them into repeat customers. PowerMarketingInternational.com for more information. That's PowerMarketingInternational.com. Power Marketing International is a member of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce, a 501c6 which helps members grow business relationships, raise business profiles, attract new customers, and partner with area nonprofits and schools to promote collaboration and goodwill. Divine, and I'm here with Juliana Jablonski. Hello, the one and hello. Only. The one and only. Who do we have right. here this afternoon? We have here with. We, uh, that's not who we have. We have here with us. I'm gonna do it for you too. Um, we have Andy and Clyde from the student um, from SG, uh, SGB, the Student Government Board. And do you guys want to say a little something? Introduce yourselves. Uh, Clyde, do you want to go first? All right, sounds good. My name is Clyde Killebrew. I am currently a sophomore. I'm a business marketing major. This is my second year of part of the Student Government Board, and I'm currently the parliamentarian. Yep, and then uh, I'm Andreas. Uh, just call me Andy, though, Reyes. Um, I'm also a part of the Student Government Board. I'm a freshman. I'm our new student representative, and I'm majoring uh, in marketing. Right. Spectacular. So what's going on in uh, Student Government Board lately? What can you tell us? Well, we're actually coming up to elections right now, so uh, if anybody would like to nominate themselves, we'd like to see some new faces on the board. Um, it's a little sad to see all of our uh, members that have been a part, like, a part of the family, uh, for them to graduate, but we really do wish them the best in their future endeavors. And what positions are open? Um, we got pretty much every single position open. Because it's the spring election, um, all everybody's open for nominations, so I'll go a little bit more in depth. We got mm -hmm. ten liberal, liberal arts and science majors um, that can participate. We have five VPA, uh, visual and performing arts. We have yep. six seats for a college of business, three seats for a college of education, and then we have five at large spots, which means everyone can um, run and everyone can vote for you. Yep. Nice. I, for one, would like to nominate Juliano. So do I. Let's hey, do it. let's do it. Yeah. I'm hey, we love friendly I'm, faces. I'm we really do. I'm graduating. I'm oh, congrats well, on graduation. Hey, congrats. We, yeah, definitely. We had our like KUR nominations for like president and mm -hmm. everything today, and they're like, we nominate Juliana. I'm like, I'm graduating. They're like, we uh, nominate you for just chilling. I was like, all right, I accept for that one. That's a good vibe. Um, <laughs> for real. Oh, yeah. Can't let you go. No, no. <laughs> so what all does uh, KU government board do here? Like for somebody who doesn't know, like what what do you do? Um. So so we're kind of the link in between the college itself and our students. So we're kind of looking to benefit both the college and the students. And the way we do that is we help organize events and all the different organizations that we have here on campus. Uh, we do provide the funds for them to go ahead and run their own events. Um, do you want to add anything to that, Claude? Yeah, no doubt. Um, Student Government Board, essentially, and it's funny you mentioned that because we have an event tonight uh, talking more about what Student Government Board can do to help organizations. Show up to House it. Of, yeah, House of Representatives uh, tonight at 7 and MSU 223. 223. But essentially, um, piggybacking off of what Andy said, um, Student Government Board is supposed to be the help to the students. Mm -hmm. um, connected not only with you know administration and faculty, but connecting with other students as well. So Absolutely. what we do, we, we highlight, you know, great organizations that have a lot going on and we also um, keep people in the loop of decisions that may affect their not only their organizations but their well-being yep. um, I know recently we had a vote uh, to approve for a new turf field for next year so that's like one of the example of things that w we work on um, mm -hmm. things that we discuss we also discuss uh, financials including budgets um, yep. status changes which I'll go more in depth on it SGB does a little bit of everything a little bit of everything <laughs> we dabble in it all for real yeah that's great. So if students have problems, they come to you. Absolutely. No doubt. Yep. Yeah, problems, but we also take, you know, advice, great suggestions, and we also want to hear the feel-good stories. Absolutely. So if your organization is doing something well, like, let us know. Hey, we love faces. So you know what? For Show real. up to out of, like, all of our meetings that we have, you know, Tuesdays, you know, 5 o'clock. Yep. Tuesdays, 5 o'clock. Tuesdays, 5 yep. o'clock, and anyone can go to these meetings? Literally, we encourage everyone. <laughs> we have a... Um, Please, yeah. We, we have a set <laughs> spot. Um... 
in the back of the room where guests can come and just sit and just listen in. Yep. We encourage so many of the students, even faculty and administration, just to hear how our meetings are going. Absolutely. We want to keep people in a loop as much as possible, and I feel like um, these next couple of years is going to be a lot easier to do that with all the great things mm -hmm. that are happening. Absolutely, because like, even if you're not a part of the board, like you don't have a vote, I still think it's very important to show up. I mean, you'll be very informed about everything that's happening on campus. Mm -hmm. I mean, even before I got involved, like, this semester, I was still dabbling around with it, like, last semester. And it was kind of, you know, Clyde was kind of, like, that mentor for me. He's like, yo, you know, show up to these meetings, like, you know, show up to these and you, you'll learn a lot. And let me tell you something, I learned a lot. A lot. You just got to put yeah, yourself yeah. in the right spots. Got to apply yourself. Yep. That's great. Well, I mean, hey, everybody listening, so what you guys said, uh, 5 o'clock on Tuesdays, uh, where where can they see you guys? Um, now, usually the meetings, if unless things change, is going to be the McFarland Student Union Building, mm -hmm. room 223, the formal dining room. Okay. Um, if that does change, they're nine times out of ten going to be in the academic forum. And we usually let everyone know well in advance when times and meetings are changed. And meeting uh, locations, I mean. Where would we go to find out where meetings change? Thank you very much. We have, <laughs> now we, we'll we hit you, yeah. we hit you on Instagram, we hit you on Twitter, and we'll hit Facebook. you on Facebook. Everywhere. Back. Now on, now on Instagram and Twitter, the at name is at KUSGB, five letters, no underscores, and on, um, and on Facebook is just Kutztown University Student Government Board. It redirects you to the page. Like it for us. Oh, we well, keep. Uh, we want to keep you on the loop. We keep man. you right. guys in the loop. That's all right. We want to inform everybody about what's happening. All right. Fa Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, multimedia platforms. Space, Vimeo. Absolutely. Twitter, everywhere. And honestly, it's coming. We'll take, it's it's loading. Yeah, it's loading. We'll take more suggestions. <laughs> yeah. Too. If you want to hey. hear some different outlets? Like, we want to hear that. We want to hear it. We only can hear it if the students come and, and share. Like, you see, like tides go both ways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like what we put out there, we want to see something come back to us. For real. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. It's great you guys are getting the community involved too. Oh, it's absolutely. Just, uh, secluded sort of little group. You guys yeah. are really involving everybody. Really. For I mean, think about it. Without, you know, the support of everybody here on campus, you know, really what would the student government board be? We Yeah, we need all the help we can get. Absolutely. We're, we're willing to, to put in that work. Yeah, for real. <laughs> you mentioned there's an event tonight. Is there any other events coming up that we should know about? Um, besides House of Representatives and besides elections, um, I will let you know about an event we did have last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was the first annual Be the Change event. Absolutely. And what we talked about, we the e-board for student government board went to New Orleans this last semester wow. um, for a diversity conference. And we learned so much there. And we wanted to start a dialogue with students, not even on a professional scale. It couldn't even be, be informal. Just talking about, like, what do we want as students? What do we want to benefit? What do we want to better here? So if we want to better the budget, how are we going to work with all the organizations to make sure the money's going to the right spots? Mm -hmm. If we want to get so many people involved, we want people to be at events, how are we going to promote it to where people feel like not only am I not wasting my time when I come to this event, but I'm gaining something and I'm meeting people. People. So what it's all about right there. Yeah, that, that we it was a good dialogue that we had, but we, we're just going to keep building off of that. And as far as um, events that are coming up, as far as I think April 4th, April 4th, we have our SGA day. Mm -hmm. um, and SGA day is essentially we're taking, you know, all the groups that are on campus and we're just showing some love. We want to appreciate all the organizations that have done a great job throughout this past year. Um, as far as getting the word out about that, uh, after this meeting, we'll have a better idea on how to get mm -hmm. people signed up for that. Um, getting people signed up organization wise and for food and all but, that. But hey, you know what? That's all the better to show up to our meetings. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's next Thursday, right? April 4th? Uh, April 4th. And honestly, if it isn't, then I'm going to be right back here and I'm going to give you the real date. <laughs> yeah, that's a you fact. That's I mean? a fact. Yeah. That's great. I mean, we'd love to have you back. So Absolutely. Hey, cool. love we the energy love in here. Uh, look, you know what? Good energy, buddy. I want to say one point. Um, I don't know if Juliana remembered this. I remember doing an interview here at KUR last year when I was a freshman, and I didn't know a thing about Kutztown, but I remember sitting here, and I remember you, like, y'all, like, definitely, like, taking me into the steps, how to talk, and, and even if, it, you know, I slipped up, we were just working it, working it all out, mm -hmm. and I just want to show appreciation to KUR as well, like, y'all really Absolutely. doing y'all thing. Aww. You guys are a great outlet, like, honestly. For real, Thank for you real. So you both seem, like, super passionate about being here at Kutztown and right. all that. What has been, like, some of your... Favorite memories so far of being here. Ooh, favorite memories. All right, so let me just put it like this. <laughs> I came onto campus. I'm a first generation college student. Okay. And really so good. I didn't know anything about, you know, anything about college. I just knew as much as I knew from high school. Mm -hmm. So coming here, it was kind of like, okay, this is a little weird. I mean, I don't really know how I'm going to get involved, but I somehow want to get involved. 
And as luck would have it, my boy Clyde over here. Love you, Clyde. Love you too, bro. Clyde was my CA. And so Clyde was kind of there, and Clyde's like, you know, I'm really into all this different stuff. I'm really putting myself out there. And he's like, you know, I, I can give this to you guys, but you know what? You have to be open to that. And I was kind of one of those people at the time I was looking for some guidance, and Clyde was luckily there. So we went ahead through with that, and then next thing you know, I start picking up. I'm going to all these different meetings. You know, I'm meeting all these faces, you know. And they're just not faces. These are people that, you know, affect our lives every day. And so, I don't know, I'm just forever grateful for, you know, all the opportunities that have been brought in my way. And on my favorite moment, <laughs> I think this year, I think this year, yeah, right, you, did, you said it, not me. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I learned, especially this semester, and what Kutztown teaches you is to always find new things to, to learn about yourself and expressing yourself in the best way possible. And I learned, like, this semester, like, how much I, I fell in love with music, and I did a lot of mm -hmm. music back then. Cozy. And I said, you know what I mean? And I, um, and I, Do you, like, sing? I rap. He rap. Now, okay, I'll tell you right. exactly how it ended up happening. I, I you was in... Mar link, you're promote it. What's going on? Yeah, I mean... Hey, I'll Coach Clyde, that's where he's at. The plug, but <laughs> Savvy, what up, bro? Yeah, like, <laughs> my, shout out my guy, Savvy. But the point is, I don't even want to like, put too much pl too, plug in. Essentially, <laughs> Kutztown taught me to, to learn how to express myself in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. And it taught me, like, even if it's the most unorthodox thing in the world, you can make everything work as long as it correlates and you're doing it for the right reasons. That's a fact. I mean, the thing you have to realize is coming here to college, you meet people from so many different backgrounds and everything like that. But the amazing thing is, even though we're so different, like, like I'm from Hershey, Pennsylvania, and Clyde's from out in New Jersey. I'm sick of like, New Jersey. We're like, <laughs> we're just two complete opposites, but the, the same, like, we have the same drive. Like, we know what we want to get out of the college experience. So, like, when they always say, you know, put in what you want to get out of it, like, mm -hmm. that's really true. And Absolutely. It, and I'm not, we're not even saying it in terms of it being, it's not easy at all. We know how college is. Oh, yeah. But if you're around the right people and you know, and, and you have a vision of doing better for yourself, it's going to fall into place naturally. Just get the good vibes. You got to trust the people, got to trust the vibes, you know. It's yeah. essential. Matt, what's been your favorite part about being here at KU? My favorite part? I don't know, just um, a big memory, something that jumps out at you. Well, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I started my uh, college career at Community College. Okay. And okay. I didn't really get much out of there, but my gen ed's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So coming to Kutztown and just meeting all these people, the CTM uh, department here, the, the film pr uh, pr uh, department is just spectacular. Mm -hmm. And just meeting all these professors like Johnston, Joyce, like everybody, they're such great people. Absolutely. And I'm getting so much like experience, field working mm -hmm. with people, hands-on experience. And that, I, I really, I really take that and appreciate it because I didn't get that outside of Kutztown. Absolutely. So that's, that's one thing I really do appreciate about Kutztown. I kind of just have like a question for you then. Yeah. Um, would you say He's that you, you... Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to do that. No, but, ahead, I mean, ahead. you sparked my interest. So like, would you say, because I was originally going to go to community college as well, mm -hmm. but I kind of felt like, you know, the type of person I am, I really need to be out there and I need to meet new people. Yes. Would you say that coming to Kutztown has really changed you as a person, like for the better? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, I, at first, I was worried about coming to Kutztown because my older brother mm -hmm. goes here, and he's, yeah, he still goes here. And, okay. Um, and I, so I was like, oh, you know, I kind of want to do my own thing. I don't want to follow my brother. You know, I get, are my parents just making me do this? But then, you know, I, I got here, and I'm like, wow, wait a minute. Like, there's so much here mm -hmm. that I just did not get in my hometown. Absolutely. And, like, just all the people, the things mm -hmm. that the school offers, like a $5 bus trip to New York on a Saturday. Like, thank you. Like, heck yeah, I'm going to go take that. <laughs> you know, that, that's wonderful. You know, they, they, they offer so much here that you just got to, like, just look around. You'll see you'll see so much stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I got I get so much out of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if that answers your question. but No, no, um, Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely coming to Kutztown. And I don't want to poo-poo the community college experience mm -hmm. because, again, like, just doing that, it saves you so much money. You get Very all your chance done. When I came here, I'm just taking film classes. Hey. And that's really what I want to do. So that, you know what? Do what you love, though. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. And that, that was, that's great. So I'm really, I'm really appreciative of that. Definitely. Well, uh, th back to SGB yeah. here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> why, why you're here. Um, uh, thank you both, uh, first off, for coming in today. Is there anything else you want to just kind of say before we uh, close out here this afternoon? Just about SGB as a whole? or um, it can. I would say it as the SGB rep, but more so as a college student. Right. I see a lot of a lot of things that Kutztown is like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, bro. I see a lot of things. I'm, I'm looking around during the day, and, it's, and maybe it's just that, how I woke up this morning. I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm excited for like where Kutztown is about to go. Like, there's a lot of innovative people that are mm -hmm. getting into the right spots and, and running these organizations. And I just feel like 
as long as we stick together and we realize we're all going for the same goal, which is just a better community, community as a whole, like, we're going to get there. And I'm excited to see what, what happens. What yeah. were you about to say, bro? And I was just going to hit people with some little bit of motivation, you know. I mean, hey, we're going into that time of the year where, you know, finals start kicking in. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. the thing that you have to realize is the thing that takes away – between you being a really good student and you just being a normal student is that extra effort that you put in. I mean, if you're out here grinding every day, keep the foot on the pedal. Don't leave up on it because you know what? Just as fast as life can give you those opportunities, take them life can take right them away. Back. Right yep. back, bro. <laughs> and you know what? Um, thank you to everybody here at KUR. Thank you to SGB, Clyde. My guy. My guy out here. Appreciate you Yeah, we so appreciate much. you guys. For real. Thank you, thank mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you both for uh, stopping in here um, into the KUR studios this afternoon. We would love to have you back anytime. You're always Absolutely. welcome. Absolutely. All right. We will be back with more of Could Sound Live. Could Sound Live. Robert Geringer, located at 100 Tomahawk Drive in Kutztown, is a certified orthopedic manual therapist as well as a board-certified clinical specialist in both sports and orthopedics. Bob specializes in the treatment of neck and back pain and believes in an intensive hands-on approach to treating his patients, emphasizing both corrective manual techniques and exercises to facilitate the changes in patient response during each session. 484-426-2021. That's 484-426-2021 for more information. Robert Geringer is a affiliated with Physical Therapy at St. Luke's and is a member of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce, a 501c6 which helps members grow business relationships, raise business profiles, attract new customers, and partner with area nonprofits and schools to promote collaboration and goodwill. And welcome to Kutztown Live, Kutztown University's campus and community talk show. I'm your host, Juliana Jablonski, here with Fran Cortez Funk to talk to us about the 3D mobile mammogram coming to campus from the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute. Hello, and welcome to Kutztown Live. Hi, how are you? Doing all right, doing all right. How are you? Okay. Um, Before I go into details, I do want to share something, and it's a little bit personal about myself. Um, Many women sometimes get the script that or or they're told that they have to go get their mammogram but usually for us we have to take a day off you know maybe we we could go grab lunch and do things like that but it, it takes a lot of planning to get that done um, so we could be compliant with our screenings and take care of our wellness well in 2012 I finally took a script off the shelf, dusted the dust off, you know, and decided that, you know, this day is going to be my day and I'm going to follow through and get my mammogram. Now, for me, I had no lumps. So when they talk about feeling lumps that, you know, and I thought, wow, this was going to be great. Um, But when I got it done, because I paid attention to my wellness screenings, they did discover that I had cancer. I had stage one. And um, I think about how if I did not get my mammogram, my story would be so much different Mm -hmm. because I kind of ignored it and ignored the urgency or ignored the timing of taking care of myself because um, I could only speak as a woman. Sometimes we get busy with our agendas at home and being and work and all that. So I'm very, very, very passionate about people getting screenings. So. I had the most wonderful opportunity that um, uh, Char, the nurse navigator, accompanied me because we wanted to go and check out this brand new 3D mobile mammograms that could be done by the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute. So what was really phenomenal, we, we, we toured it, we saw it, we looked at it, and we were like one of the first community groups that came in to view this wonderful um piece of machinery that would be very convenient for women and there are men but if you're diagnostic for women or men this is not where you go you would have to follow whatever your primary care physician orders for you but this is for regular screenings and we just looked at each other and we're like we want that we're going to bring it to Kutztown so next week at the health and wellness expo in the uh, student rec center Representatives from the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute will be there if people are interested in signing up and making an appointment. What we're trying to do is we're trying to reach the bar and have 18 screenings that occur here on campus. 
it is open to students who are 40 years of age or older, and we seem to have a lot of post-traditional students here at the university, and also, too, for staff, faculty, and community members. I would even say alumni. I would even say students, bring your mom on campus, your aunt on campus, or people that you know are not taking care of their screening business. It's only going to take 20 minutes. If a student brings a parent up, hey, it's a win-win, 20 minutes for your loved one, and then maybe if you're lucky, two hours of shopping and maybe 45 minutes of lunch. So we could get that done. Also, too, what's pretty phenomenal about this, people that are 40 years of age or older who do not have insurance, there is funding that could pay for this screening. And I think that that's epic. And once you end up being part of um, the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute, you'd be work if something would come up, and you would need treatment, then they would be able to work with you because a lot of the institutes have some kind of funding to help cover the cost. Uh, I also, as being a cancer survivor, uh, I have learned how people just said, oops, I better just go get this done, and how people had an opportunity to kind of, I wouldn't say battle, but take the journey to address the medical issues that present before them. So, the day that the, actually the uh, um, mobile will be here on campus will be on April 4th. It's going to be parked in the Student Recreation Center parking lot. So it's accessible for anybody to grab a park. It only is going to take 20 minutes of your day. So staff, faculty, students that are 40 age or older, alumni, you know, moms, aunties, sissies, or anybody that ends up being of that age, this is phenomenal. This is a great opportunity that we have here at the university. Also, also in regards to that, you would have to call 610-402-8659, okay? 610-402-8659. If you don't want to wait until the Health Expo next week and you want to call Lehigh Valley Health Network and set up your appointment for your screening, um, I would say that if you want to talk to a representative or someone will contact you as you schedule it, if you have private insurance, they'll run the private insurance in regards to it. Um, but also, too, you, you have to be pre-registered to do this because for convenience sake, for the person that's getting the screening, they would run the insurance. Or if you happen to be a person who does not have insurance, they'll be able to process things so you can get in, out, and go about your business. And then you'll be – and people that are going to different hospitals, this is also open to you as well, you know, because a lot of times a lot of these hospitals are sharing, you know, their medical electronic records. So um, in the past, and this is what I've learned, and I'm no complete expert. I'm a novice, so I'm a lay person. So that is my, I guess, disclaimer. So from what I understand, in previous years, women always thought that they needed a script from their doctor or their OBGYN to get a routine mammogram. Mm -hmm. That is not necessary. The only time you really need a script now is if you're getting diagnostic. So, for example, as me as a survivor, if I am to go get something done, I can't go to the, the mobile that day. I work with my doctors in regards to having a diagnostic. So you could go and get this done. This is about routine screening. It's 3D. Um, if you have questions, you know, I'm sure the people there at Lehigh Valley Health Network, whether on the phone at 610-402-8659, or whether or not you could talk to someone in person and pre-register at the Health Expo, mm -hmm. that you could get this done. So again, this is open to all the community members, staff, faculty, students 40 years of age or older, whether you have private insurance or no insurance at all, community members. It could be one of your most favorite person that you like when you go to one of these eating establishments and you could say, hey, we're bringing the mammogram thing here on campus. <laughs> um, invite your parents up people that you know and if anything the most important thing is to have the conversation and talk to a loved one saying did you get your screening and what's really pretty awesome because Shar and I the nurse navigator <laughs> and myself we were so determined to bring this to Kutztown University so when I checked into it I refused to get off the phone until they said yes 
Well, of course, they were going to say yes anyway. <laughs> but anyway, I'd like to mm -hmm. own that. But eh. but they're also coming back on October 7th, Monday, okay. October 7th. So the screenings will occur from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on both those days. So again, stop by at the Health Expo next Thursday, March 28th in the rec center from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And, oh, by the way, we are going to have light refreshments. <laughs> okay. Also, um, or call 610-402-8659. The university is doing a lot of advertisement. So check, check the news about the university. There's a really awesome link to show what exactly this whole vehicle looks like. All right. Wow, I think that's really great that you're bringing that here to uh, Kutztown. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for stopping and sharing all of that and your story with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll be back with more of Kutztown Live. Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Kutztown Live, only here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. It's your girl, Laura, here, and I am hosting your show today, and I'm very excited to be back here for another week of great guests and great community and campus talk. So today we have some friends from the library. Hello, friends from the library. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Sylvia Pong. Hi, I'm Jordan Harris. Great. Hello. Um, we are very excited to have you here. So what can you tell us a little bit about what the library is up to right now? Okay, so on Thursday, March 28th, 2019, uh, the library is hosting a human library event. So this is our second human library event. We had one in the fall of the 2017 semester. And we are collaborating with the Office of Inclusion and Outreach on this event. And uh, it's a great concept. It began in 2000 in Copenhagen, Denmark. and. The idea of it slowly started to spread throughout Europe and North America. So I believe we're the first library in the state system of higher education to host this event. And there are several other libraries in Pennsylvania that have done this. But like I said, we're the first one in the state system to do it. So we're really excited about hosting the event coming up. OK, so what can you tell me a little bit about a human library? What is that? OK. so. Normally, when you go to a library, you take out a book. However, um, with a human library, you get to check out a human book. And the idea is to engage in a meaningful dialogue and conversations with a human book. It could be about a special issue or topic that challenges stereotypes and prejudices. And it really gets people to really engage, engage in the conversation that maybe they may not always have that opportunity to. So it's a personal one-on-one. -on -one. So it's intimate, it's, uh, it's not in a formal classroom, or it's not like viewing something online. And, and that's what I think the heart of it is, it's that human interaction, that interpersonal relationship. And we want people to come away with a sense of empathy and understanding for the, pers the human books um, issue or topic. And we really want people to just appreciate your fellow human being. Okay. So it's a great chance to really have conversations that maybe you may not have um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. So what is some examples of some topics that a human book would be well-versed in? Okay. So we have a, a few different human books this time around. We have about 11 human books. We have um, someone who's identifying as an addict. Um, we have someone who's identifying with, uh, let's see, veganism. Mm. We also have someone who's on the spectrum. So we have a wide variety of um, personal issues. Uh, it could be medical. It could be um, a victim of a crime. So, yeah, there's, there's quite a few. Great. Okay. And so what do you think is such a benefit about this for the student student body? What drove the library to start this process and start this program? 
Um, I think it's a really great opportunity for Kutztown, the Kutztown community to get to know each other and really understand the people we interact with every day, the people we pass on the sidewalk. It's a great time to just have a positive environment, to have a conversation that you're not typically going to have when you're sitting in the cafeteria or you're sitting in our library on a normal basis. It's something um, to really open your perspective on a topic you might not know anything about. Okay, so what were some of the ones that, um, some of the human books that you had last year when you did this? We had, uh, we had someone who identified as Muslim. Oh. Yeah, and we also had someone who identified as uh, transgender. Hmm. Uh, we had someone identify with uh, being a victim of abuse. So we had about, about 11 to 12 books last, last time around, too. And this year, uh, new, what we have new are um, veganism, for example. Um, let's see, I sense differently. So uh, right now, I'm just t call, um, naming some of the titles uh, that these human books are calling themselves. Okay. Yeah. And so when one checks out a human book, what does that look like? Okay, so they will be going to, readers will be going to the library lobby and we'll have like a, a station set up and they get a chance to look at the catalog. We'll print out the catalog and uh, they could see what books are there and then they could check one out. They will meet with the human book and we do have sections of the library that will be closed off to the general public and we'll have tables and chairs set up so they can actually sit and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation for about 15 to 20 minutes um, for each session. And you can have groups up to three people looking at a human book, but we really want to get that interpersonal one-on-one -on -one conversations. So after that, then both the human reader and the human book will go back to the lobby, and then uh, anyone who's attending the event can check out as many human books as they would like. It could just be one, it could be all of them. We are open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for this particular event, so uh, it, a person can come any time to check out a human book. Okay. During 10 to 4. Great. So what do you think? I mean, uh, you were there last year, obviously. You organized this last year as well? Or involved I helped to organize it? that, okay. yes. So what, did you see any change from the way that people interacted from like the beginning of meeting a human book versus, you know, at the end? Or like, how, how are people affected by this? I, it was very positive. I think uh, people felt like they learned a lot. It was a great learning experience on the part of the human reader. So they did gain a greater sense of um, empathy and understanding. And I think for some of the human books, it was actually kind of therapeutic to, to be open and frank about, about what it so strongly affects them. So because of that, we actually got a lot of feedback asking to host a second human library event. So we, like I said, we, had our, we are collaborating with the Office of Inclusion and Outreach, so we thought that the spring would be a good time. So um, that's why originally it was in the fall 2017, and now we're having it in the spring because we thought that might be a good time for people to come and, and engage in this type of conversation. Okay, that sounds like a great plan. That sounds awesome. So now, who is, is this open to the public? Is this open to KU students? How is this working? Um, it's open to the public. Uh, so we do actually have a human book who is a member of the general community. So the public's uh, welcome to come, you know, and, and check out a human book, yeah. And obviously students and, you know, faculty and staff. Actually, our human books, we do have faculty, staff, and student representation as well as the community. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So what else is going on in the library other than the human library event? Like, do you guys plan other events and things, or is that something, is this the, the only one? Yeah, we have some really great events coming up um, for Stress Relief Week, which is the week before finals. Um, we have therapy dogs from the Lehigh Therapy Dog Group. Um, they're going to be with us May 1st at 6 p.m. And it's really fun. They just come in, hang out in the library. You can um, play with them, pet them, just relax. It's a great um, time just to have some stress relief, take a break from studying. Um, and then we also do a really cool giveaway for a VAP study room. Um, on our social media the week before finals, um, you'll see a post and 
if you comment on it and you um, like our page, you'll be able to win, um, have a chance to win a study room that's packed with um, study supplies, with snacks. Um, you know, we bring in like blow up inflatable chairs. It's just a really comfortable private space for you and your friends to utilize. Um, and then we also do stress relief kits, which is just a bunch of, you know, stress relief balls and um, we have these cool fidget spinners and snacks and just things that while you're sitting in the library studying you may um, find helpful or stress relieving. Okay, great. So what do you think is the most important misconception about the library here on campus? I think a lot of people come in and think, oh, you have to be quiet, this is a library. But we do have a lot of areas that you can um, work collaboratively with people. Obviously our coffee shop is one of the most popular spots I think in the building. But we do have study rooms that you can reserve for group study. We have, um, especially I think on the main lab on the first floor, we have areas in the back that you have tables and, uh, and that media scape. Uh, set up where you, you can bring your laptops in and your tablets and then you can actually see what's on a main computer screen so you can do group projects like that together. Well, uh, We have, let's see, we have computers on all three floors so if, you, if the main lobby is super busy there are other places you can go to to work. Um, if you are the type who needs to work quietly, we have a large section on the top floor that's reserved for quiet study space. Uh, we do recognize that people have different needs for studying and working, so we try to accommodate a variety of needs that way by having different areas in the library designated for different things. Okay, great. And so does, is it and is an inclusive space? Like, you know, I know you are talking about the, um, a human library event being so inclusive, does that carry over into everyday life in the library? I think so. I think, uh, you know, we, we try to, we, we're here for the students, so we definitely try to meet the needs of all our students. Uh, it's just a matter of asking um, what do they need help with, and um, I think you'll find that a lot of the, the, the staff are, are accommodating to, to what the needs are, so. Okay, excellent. And what do you think is the most underutilized support aspect of the library? I, I don't think a lot of people know that we have an archives, the university archives we late uh, housed in the library. So it's a great way to learn about the history of the university because all the yearbooks, for example, and other student uh, newspapers from years past, all of that information is up up on our archives located on the top floor so that's like a nice hidden gem interesting yeah so can one go how does how does that work if you're using that like do you do you just go up and look for stuff how does that work well it is closed uh, uh, some of the artif our artifacts are um, in, in closed areas however we do have a librarian that uh, you can send an email to or if you happen to be at the desk, uh, someone will contact that librarian to come down and then uh, you can work with that librarian on finding, you know, your historical artifacts and information and things like that. Oh, that's really great. Okay. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Thank you for thank having you. us. Absolutely. All right. We will be right back, everyone, on Kutztown Live, only here on the radio voice of Kutztown University. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more great stuff coming up.